Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone, wherever you are in the world. It is good to see you tonight. Yes, it's tonight here in uh, New England, USA, and I'm coming back to you because my scheduled live at 11 o'clock this morning disappeared. So I'm back to share with you again our apologies for not being on time. We love technology when it works, but yep, there are definitely those days where <laughs> I just want to throw it out the window. Maybe I won't do that because I do want to think positively, right? So today I want to talk to you about the idea that all living organisms, all living systems have this tendency to lean into and to work toward the most positive images they hold of themselves, to lean into that which gives energy and vibrancy and helps us become the best we can. So it's easiest to understand and to literally see this in action. If you look at a plant on your windowsill, as it moves toward the sun, toward life-giving energy. That movement is what we call the heliotropic effect and its power is visible in all living things. I'm fascinated to watch some of my um, garden flowers just literally turn as the day goes by so that they face the sunshine. The heliotropic effect is about energy and a focus on the abundance gap between negative and positive. Life, as we know it, life in all its forms always strives toward the light, toward positive energy and away from darkness. We crave the sunshine, for example, for its life-giving force, its way of inspiring us and energizing us and brightening our moods, right? And that's when you think of it, seasonal affective disorder is the lack of sunshine, the lack of that which fills us with life-giving energy. So the sun, the positive, has a pull on all of life that just can't be ignored. We're drawn toward those things that feed us and nourish us whether that's nutritionally, spiritually, emotionally, and even intellectually. And indeed, inherent in our DNA is a drive to strive toward the positive, a drive to learn, to become, and do more. You've heard me and Susie both talk about positive psychology, that study of what makes life worth living, and that gratitude has the biggest impact on our health and our energy and our positive life changes. So as we humans continue to strive toward the positive, that really enhances our well-being, doesn't it? You think about, about it, um, you wake up and it's a bright sunshiny day, you're feeling a whole lot better than if it's cloudy and rainy and thundering out. So well-being is a skill, right? And we know that any skill that we want to perfect needs practice. It's with that practice that the skill will strengthen. And so as we practice positivity and gratitude that comes from that, our outlook on life, our ability to see and to savor goodness and positivity will only become stronger and deeper. I think of it as a cycle, right? We see something good. We're grateful when we find that good, which makes us feel better and increases our well being, which, when you think about it, only opens us to seeing more beauty in the world around us. And when we see more beauty, we, well, you know what's next. Zig Ziglar said it well gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The more you express gratitude for, the more you're likely you will have even more to be thankful for. Gratitude actually changes our brain. Isn't that wild? 
leads to less PTSD, less stress, a lower blood pressure. And yes, it's true, if I'm to be honest, I'm not asking you to see life through rose-colored glasses. I know that the negative is there. We can't ignore it or avoid it. But I'm challenging you. I'm encouraging you to choose to entertain the positive. Don't be blind to the negative. Rather, make that explicit choice what you will focus on. Think of the analogy of a water lily, right? Oh, I love water lilies. They're closed up tight at night. And they very slightly begin to open as the dawn comes. And as the sun brightens more and more, the water lily opens more fully. And that's what our brains do with positivity. Our mind is opened by positivity. It changes the way people interpret life. It changes our attitudes, our perspectives, helps us be more creative and resilient, leads to better academics and medical, medical? better medical decisions, helps us see past differences toward unity with people who aren't like us. And all of those things can't help but bring a better world into being. Humans are innately built to search for not only physical light, but also just the very concept of light, right? Even our language is inundated with light metaphors that frame the way we think about concepts like hope and optimism overcoming darkness or challenges. Just think of it. Frequently, we're muttering phrases like, there's light at the end of the tunnel, or you are the light of my life, or a light bulb went off, my mind was illuminated. What a bright idea. Or he is a shining example, or even, when we're about to die, going toward the light that beckons. So lean yourselves toward the light. Don't fight that inherent part of us that craves the warmth, the brightness, the energy, the radiance of the light in our lives. Be positive, grow and become all that you are meant to be and can be. That's it for today. Check out in the bonuses that came out a little while ago to learn more about Professor Kim Cameron and hear more from him uh, as he talks about the heliotropic effect. So good to see you all today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.